What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at the 2024 Toyota 4Runner. This one is an SR5 premium rear wheel drive. Big question is, is this the final year of the fifth generation Toyota 4Runner? Been on sale this gen since 2010. They've done slight revisions over the years, basically with the bumpers and dashboard and then a few different trim levels here and there. Fundamentally, it is the same vehicle for about 15 years. So do you guys think 2025 is gonna be the all new 4Runner? Is it gonna match the new Toyota Tacoma with a four cylinder only versus this old school six cylinder, old transmission, obviously body on frame. So comment below, what do you guys think? Do you think the next one, 2025, is gonna be all new? Now underneath the hood, this has the Dinosaur 4 liter V6. Naturally aspirated engine paired to a five speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 270 horsepower with 268 pound-feet of torque. It has a 23-gallon fuel tank, and it can get 16 miles per gallon in the city with 19 out on the highway. And then towing is about 5,000 pounds. Of course, four-wheel drive is available. This one just happens to be a rear-wheel drive version. Moving on to the exterior styling. This color is underground. This one is about $46,000. It's a really sweet color. I definitely like it for the 2024 model year. You can see just more of a flattish gray. We have the chrome Toyota badge in the front with some whiskers on the side of it. Nice body color design throughout this front grille. Safety sensor along with massive openings to provide cooling to the radiators. You have a nice set of LED headlights with those traditional halogen turn signals, of course, from Toyota. Some chrome in the headlight as well, LED fog lights. I like this front bumper. When this came out, not everyone liked it, but it's still pretty meaty and aggressive. The hood has some sharp body lines fading towards the windshield. And then as we get to the side profile, we have a set of 17 inch wheels. These are just the basic Toyota 4Runner rims. You can see an all-terrain tire on them, body color for this fender arch, smooth body lines throughout the front fender as well. And then you can see body color on the mirror caps along with an LED turn signal. Yeah, body color for the grab handles and then a little bit of body molding throughout the door panel. It's a nice looking SUV, even today. It's nice and boxy. It's got that rugged look to it. You have some fender arches in the back that have a slight bulge to them. Then you can see the roof rails up on top, finished in silver. SR5 badge, got mud flaps all around. And then in back, you can see that shark fin antenna, body colored mounted spoiler, some black trim, and a nice set of LED taillights. You got some nice designs throughout the rear end. You got chrome for the Toyota 4Runner logo, backup camera, and then this button right here, super unique to the 4Runner. If you hold this downwards one, you have a power sliding rear glass. That is one of my favorite features. I hope they retain this in the next generation. You can also see the molding throughout the center. Kind of looks like the Toyota truck logo, which is really cool. And then the rear bumper just has some nice contours along with the tailgate. So overall design, I mean, it's a cool looking truck for sure. Can't really complain and uh, I'm excited for the next model year. So pressing the button back here, we can manually lift open the lift gate. There are three different versions you can get. This is the standard one with just all your normal storage. And then there is a shelf that can slide outwards. It does rob you of some space, but good for if you need to load a lot of items and not hit your bumper, maybe a dog or something. You can also get a three row in a Toyota 4Runner. It's a little cramped, so I wouldn't really recommend it. But back here, you got a lot of storage space over the left rear arch. And then you can even pop this open and put some hidden storage in there. On the other side, we have even more storage all throughout it. You got a plug along with a 12 volt. And then I just like how boxy it is. There's hooks all around it, tied on hooks down below. Incredibly useful. For these back seats, you can even pull this one down, which is great if you're hauling some two by fours and you got the kids with you. So you can easily use this as a four person utility vehicle, which is very, very practical. On top of all that, the seats are gonna fold down really easily and very nicely. So if you go ahead and pull these, you can see that will open up, giving you a lot of space. Of course, both sides will do it. Headrests fold down for visibility, but they also fold down to be able to fit nicely. So doing that, they're gonna fold down nice and flat to truly maximize how much space you can utilize this for. On the other side, we can do the same thing. If we lift this up, you can see how you're gonna have that same amount of space. And then just reaching over, you can press that button and this will slide down nicely and you have all that space. So definitely a cool SUV with how much practicality you have. How many SUVs are this practical? 
You also have speakers up on top with dome lights and then different grab handles. You can easily close it. If we take a look into the interior now, of course this will fold all the way flat when you give it a firm pull, but I like how flat the floor is in here. You can haul big items in here. This is a good barrier to where things aren't gonna slide into you. From here, we can just pull this back up, lock it into place, same thing, and pop that back up. This is a pretty decent back row, honestly, for not being a giant SUV. But if we go ahead and close the door, I like how you have a nice armrest right here with cup holders. There are even air vents, storage, a little bit of plugs. You have storage in the door, nice armrest. And then even down here, you can recline this a decent amount to where you actually can fit comfortably. At five foot 11 with the front seats at my height, I have plenty of knee room. It's actually a pretty good SUV to be in here. So nice and roomy, good amenities for what it is. Really can't complain either way. Even with the driver's seat at my height, I mean, this is plenty of knee room. Just a really open place to be. All right, moving on to the driver's seat now. So this one also, the interior is called soft tech. So it's a synthetic leather material, basically a vinyl. It is pretty durable though. Honestly, my dad has one of these with 100,000 miles. It still looks brand new. So honestly, nice material. It's not the most plush. I mean, it's kind of rough feeling, but nonetheless, it gets the job done. This is a rugged vehicle. It's not a luxury vehicle. You have the vinyl material for the armrest and insert, massive grab handle, more storage, all your controls, storage down below. This features an eight speaker audio system as well. You have power controls on the driver's seat, and I do like the two-tone color with gray and black. So pretty cool looking for what it is. I mean, again, it's nothing fancy or outlandish. And then hopping inside, let's fire it up. So you have a nice display right in the center, cool depiction. I do like the blacked out bezels for the gauge cluster. It has a little bit of a sporty look. Basic dashboard as you would expect. Controls on this side, you can configure a few things throughout the center screen. Basically monitor trip information, speed, things like that. And then a few more settings are gonna pop up all throughout the center screen. So again, simple, but useful. We have media controls on the left side. You have forward pacing, lane keeping, a few more controls. Cruise control is down here. Stock on the right side for all the windshield wipers, headlights on the left. And then down here, we see the auto high beams, interior dimming and mirror control. One of your air vents and this golf ball texture kind of looks like aluminum for this plastic trim. Got your old school clock, air vents, and then the screen here, again, simple. You have three configurable screens in your home menu. If you go to the actual menu, you can see a few more settings you're able to adjust. Of course, audio, map, a few more shortcuts on the right side. And then going into reverse, you have a pretty good backup camera with guidelines. Again, nothing fancy, however, it gets the job done. You have all your massive dials for climate. You have fan speed on the left, right side, you have temperature, zones, all different controls with the heated side mirrors and window. A little bit of storage and plugs, more storage down below. The four wheel drive would be over here. Then you have more storage, heated seats, and the button for that power glass. So once again, definitely one of the coolest features. I hope they retain that on the next gen. We have more of this black vinyl material for the armrests with a little bit of storage. And then your glove box, as you'd expect. One last look at the interior probably the outgoing model we'll see what comes soon but nonetheless it is a very functional vehicle utilitarian you have garage door buttons sunglass holder along with traction control and then your mirror all right so setting off now in the toyota 4runner as far as the driving experience it hasn't really changed it feels pretty much even the same as the previous generation so the last 20 years of 4runner pretty much drive the exact same you're just going to notice a few more safety features obviously in the more modern one like the lane keeping radar cruise control and a few others that you can cycle through so it's pretty normal in here it's old school you know they haven't changed this a lot but toyota is slow to change honestly their vehicles last 10 to 15 years as far as design goes and that's just how they do it. So if you're looking for the most tech savvy off-roader, you know, maybe you want a Range Rover. However, if you want bulletproof reliability, dependability, and just simple, Toyota 4Runner can probably do it all. So when you're in here, good visibility. I like the driving position. You feel up high, but it doesn't feel like a bulky, hard to place SUV. So you can see the hood. You have a very far away windshield that's very up and down. 
good visibility with all your mirrors and then over your right and left shoulders honestly there's no blind spots this thing is so easy to see around and it's just so easy to use now the seat comfort is pretty good they're not exactly luxurious or plush seats i would say however sitting here you know they're nicely padded you can get a pretty good amount of adjustments you can kind of rock the front of the seat upwards a little bit to help cradle you this old engine and transmission getting up to some speed kind of half throttling it it is not a sports car it is not fast the five speed leaves a lot to be desired gas mileage is really all not that good um, it is what it is again it's nothing too crazy i'm sure the next gen is going to have the four cylinder turbo and the four cylinder turbo hybrid probably paired to an eight or ten speed transmission so the five speed again you know highway cruising it does do a good job for the overdrive honestly like it's not crazy high in the revs when you're going higher speeds even going about 40 right now we're only at a thousand rpm so it does a good job it's just it's not a performance focused transmission to really get you moving zero to six time is probably around seven seconds so it'll get up to speed it's decent for passing merging on the highway things like that just nothing really peppy about it it is comfortable though i like the armrest and everything and you can even use this upper door sill kind of as an armrest so it's a cool truck to be in and i say truck because it kind of feels like a truck it's a very trucky suv especially given it is body on frame this is old school how it all began way back in the day so to still have a 2024 model year suv that is this old school is kind of remarkable in the fact that they still sell these so well clearly there is a market that loves this design and just this aspect to how an suv could totally be using the interior is also really simple i mean these massive knobs if you're wearing gloves you know if you're off-roading or driving in the snow you know you can operate this vehicle wearing gloves so toyota has made this super utilitarian especially if you're going to use this as utility vehicle maybe you're using this as a work vehicle quite honestly you know my dad's got one like i said he's used this as a work vehicle around the house yard work stuff like that and he's in and out of it using it as kind of like a side-by-side -side, quite honestly and you can use this when you're doing that sort of thing so there's a lot going for the forerunner i'm sure the next gen is going to be a completely different type of vehicle to where this could be it you know if you want this type of forerunner this is your last chance to get one and for this one obviously there's no four-wheel drive which i would prefer four-wheel drive which is only a little bit more expensive this one under 50 grand isn't the worst given today's market but it is a lot definitely for an old vehicle but i think a lot of people still like it so anyway overall driving dynamics yeah pretty simple pretty normal nothing all too fancy about it road noise and wind noise is actually pretty decent for being a very boxy suv so it's something you can comfortably daily drive use for the commute things like that if you just want a reliable suv it's easy to drive around too given the amazing ground clearance low overhangs you can go anywhere with it even in a more basic configuration like the one we're in today so you don't even really need to go trd or anything like that if you want capability so even a basic two-wheel drive sr5 honestly is something you can use on the day-to-day -day, wherever you need to go you can probably do it in a toyota 4runner yeah.